Hey guys, Victoria here and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all about chemistry and how you can score A plus for your chemistry paper in SPM. So let's get right into it. My first tip for you is to understand each and every chapter in chemistry. This is because all the chapters in chemistry are interconnected. So if you cannot understand one chapter, then you'll have difficulty understanding the next one. You have to remember that this is not biology. Just by memorizing everything is not enough. You have to actually understand it. Even in biology, you cannot get by by just memorizing things. And in chemistry, even more so, you have to understand everything that you read. However, there are certain things in chemistry that requires memorizing and one of the examples is the electrochemical series. Things like that you have to really memorize because it applies to a lot of questions. So my advice to you is to find a good way to memorize the electrochemical series in such a way that you will never forget it. This is because if you are planning to further your studies in science, then you will still be using the things like the electrochemical series even when you are in uni. So do find a way that will make you remember it for a long term. Put it under your long term memory. So this brings me to my next point, which is to find a good way to memorize the things that you need to memorize. So for me, when it comes to memorizing, there is no better way than to use acronyms. And in all the science subjects especially, in biology, in chemistry, even for sejarah, I find acronyms to be very helpful. So now I'll give you an example of how I memorize the electrochemical series. Now I want you to think of two friends or enemies, either one. Think of someone whose name starts with K and now think of someone whose name starts with C. So two friends or two enemies. Okay, so the two names that I've chosen are Kelly and Katrine. And so the acronym is Kelly and Katrine meet and Zane feel happy plus sad cause aggressive. Okay, now I want you to pause this video at the last few seconds where I ask you to pause. Take your time to understand the acronym that I've created along with the, the sentence and the substances that are beside it. You just take a few minutes to soak it in and really try to memorize that acronym. So that is the acronym that I personally use to memorize the ECS. I created it back when I was in Form 4 and now even in uni, I can still remember every single thing. So you can either use the acronym that I've given you to memorize the ECS or you can make your own. Your acronyms do not need to make sense. In fact, I often try to make my acronym as absurd or as funny as possible so that it registers in my memory. And then make sure that you try to really remember the acronym, put it under your long term memory. So my third tip is to do a whole lot of exercise. For me, there is no better way to improve chemistry than by doing a lot of exercise. After doing a whole lot of exercise, you realize that all the essay questions and all the questions in general are just a repetition. For me, for essay questions, I always focus on rate of reaction and collision theory, ionic and covalent bond, salt and electroplating. I think these are the four popular essay questions that are always asked. You do a lot of exercise and you are familiar with the style of the question. You realize that there is a certain pattern to the question. Another example is that the periodic table will always be asked in paper 2 but in the first section. They will always like give you a periodic table and then they will ask, okay, name P, name Q. Uh, which has a ra greater radius, P or Q, something like that. So when you do a lot of exercise, you won't find these things to be difficult anymore. you just be like, okay, I know this, I've done this before. So for chemistry, I really pay attention in class and I try to understand what the teacher is teaching as she's doing so. And then when I come home, I don't read my materials anymore unless I have time. If I don't have time, I just go straight on to the exercise and tackle them. And then if I have any problem, I approach the teacher immediately the next day to clarify my doubts. It is super important that you clarify your doubts immediately or they will just stack up and you won't know what you don't know. So immediately after you don't know something, just go to someone who knows it and 
learn from them. My fourth tip is to really understand each and every experiment in chemistry. This is because unlike the experiments in physics and biology, where they are regularly tested in paper 3, the experiments in chemistry are actually tested in paper 2 as well and sometimes even in paper 1. So I think it is safe to say that all the experiments in chemistry are extremely important. You need to fully understand each and every experiment, know all the variables and all the procedures to that experiment. So I know that it's almost impossible to memorize all the experiments and all the steps to all the experiments because there are just too many experiments. So what I do is that instead of memorizing from the book, I memorize from the lab sessions that we have at school. Whenever you have lab sessions in school, really understand the experiment before you begin to conduct it. You have to read through first and then when you're conducting the experiment, try to remember all the steps. Don't just conduct the experiment blindly without knowing what is going on. When you're conducting the experiment, be present, be fully there so that after that when you're trying to recall the steps of the experiment, you can visualize how you were doing it. So the best way to do this is of course to get yourself involved in the experiment. Don't be the inactive member just sitting there. You have to actually get out and get all the apparatus and conduct the experiment so that you can remember the process better. So my fifth tip is regarding all the little little details that you really need to pay attention to especially when you're answering questions regarding experiments. In chemistry, there are certain things that you need to take note of when you are answering the experiment questions. Like for example, when you are drawing a test tube and inside there you are putting solid, then you have to put dots to indicate solids. And then if you are drawing liquid, then you have to put dotted line to indicate liquid. In chemistry, we frequently draw Bunsen burner. I don't know if you are aware of this, but it's not necessary for us to draw the Bunsen burner out like with all the air hole and everything, no. According to the answer scheme, they will give marks as long as we have the tripod stand and then underneath that we draw one arrow and beside that we write heat. So writing that is sufficient to represent a Bunsen burner. You don't need to like actually memorize how to draw a Bunsen burner. Also, if you were to draw a Bunsen burner in the exam, it would take so much more of your time when you could be answering another question. The other thing is when you're drawing a water bath with a test tube inside, the level of the water bath must be higher than the level of the solution inside the test tube. Otherwise, your experimental setup will not be considered functional and marks will not be given. The last thing to take note of is when you're drawing a test tube with a stopper, the stopper has to be just right in the middle. It cannot be inserted or the diagram will not be considered functional. So it's super important that you take note of the little things like that, especially for public exams like SPM, because marks will be deducted if you do not follow the marking scheme. The last thing that I can suggest is that you keep a formula sheet for chemistry. That means all the formulas that you come across, you can write it down on that paper. Because there are not many calculation questions in chemistry and for me I think that the calculation questions are easier than most questions so whenever a calculation question comes up make sure that you know how to answer it. Keep the list of formulas in one place and just go through it one day before the exam and you'll do well. So that's all the tips I have for chemistry. You can like this video if you liked it and you can subscribe to my channel down below to get notified when I post new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.